Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you are new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you very very much for clicking on this video today. If you are new, my name is Rabbit, my pronouns are they them, and this video, oh, this is a video that is so exciting, I literally never thought it would come because A, I never thought I would have like any interest in collaborating with a company, um, and B, I never thought any company would be like, yeah, sure. We'll 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 you shoot your shot. We'll we'll do this thing. Um, <laughs> so that's my way of saying that I am so so freaking excited about this video today because um, basically I got sent some samples from a brand of perfume. Okay, it's okay. Let's back up. So basically, um, for the past couple of months, I'd say I've been getting really really into fragrances and scents and smelling things. Um, for the past six years, I've kind of only worn one fragrance ever. It's been Lust by Lush, um, and I love it. But basically the reason that I never branched out into anything else was because every time I smelled most other perfumes, they were just really like generic smelling to me and I never found something that I liked. And then when I did hear about like really cool, interesting perfumes, it, it seemed I didn't know like where to try them. And I was just like nervous about them not working. And I was also worried about like not finding like vegan options. So I just like stuck with Lush lust and was like this is my thing forever but lately i've gotten really into other fragrances and actually like wanting to like try different things and experience different smells i've always really liked really intense different weird smells before i found lust by lush i like literally would wear patchouli oil as like my perfume i had like a big hippie phase and it was all like patchouli oil lavender oil just like directly on the skin like i must have stunk up every place i went but regardless i like have been wanting back to get back into like having more than one thing in my collection and trying different things and the big pastime that I've taken up is watching other people's fragrance reviews on YouTube and they are just so fascinating because I truly find that smell is such an evocative sense and one that I really truly did not engage with very much until recently. Um, now every time I cook I like smell all the ingredients, I like smell my coffee in the morning before I brew it, I like smell butter butter, vegan butter, um, before I like make stir fry. I smell like fresh vegetables. I go outside and I like will crush leaves in my hands and smell them and just like smell all the herbs and like it's, it's, it's scent is just uh, such an evocative thing and even without perfume it's so special but with perfume I found that it can take you on such a journey and that takes me um, basically to this brand which by the way not sponsored or anything but disclaimer I did get sent these for free. Thank you so much to the very very generous owner of the brand, Victor Wong. Um, you're super cool and I'm really, really enthralled with the creative process and kind of found everything like super stunning. So thank you very much for sending me these. Despite the fact that they have been sent to me, I will not let that affect my review. And in addition to that, I will also do like a little outfit for each fragrance or multiple because sometimes I couldn't pick um, because like my whole life everyone's always like, oh, it's not a fashion show, like blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? It's my YouTube channel. So yes, it is a fashion show and I get to pick. So. <laughs> Um, you're welcome to skip things if you are not interested. Let me tell you a little bit about the fragrance company. So, um, as I said, it was founded by Victor Wong, who lives in Canada, which is, like, super cool because, like, fellow Canadian. And the other thing is that it's completely cruelty-free, which was the other thing that was, like, super, super important and special to me because the fragrances are all based on animals, but not the animal scent itself, though that can be incorporated into a lot of them. They do these fragrances, they're based around animals' habitats and what they eat, where they might go, and yeah, just like th things about that animal. As a person who's loved animals for all my life and has been vegan since I was 12, just like this like so resonated with me, and the artwork on this company is just like mind-blowing. They do these really gorgeous animal portraits that are wearing these like incredibly gorgeous outfits which as a lover of fashion and as a lover of animals I just mm, it's like so special and specific and perfect like can I show you this is the, this fragrance is what got me like interested and kind of obsessed and reaching out to Victor to ask like hey can I sample this please um is this bat look at this this beautiful bat in this little vampire outfit I will review all of these for you it's going to be a very long video um so I will have timestamps in the description they have this incredible artwork for each of the animals and I feel like when you do animal head wearing clothes you can veer very easily into that like 2012 tumblr territory these are not anything like that these are incredibly elegant incredibly beautiful the details when you like actually like look at all the different like the details of like the flowers that are on different pieces of clothing that you notice are notes and the perfume and like stuff like that is just like so beautiful plus the other thing that just like got me completely 
enraptured <laughs> with this company was the stories that they write about their fragrances. I love how sen the sense of smell just triggers something so quickly and like triggers such vivid images, at least for me, um, and I've just been letting my imagination run wild with these guys, but having these beautiful poems basically to accompany each of the scents has just also been like super special. Um, I will share my honest thoughts with you about these fragrances. Big disclaimer that like everyone is different. This sounds like so ew, pretentious, but like the thing about these fragrances is that I would say that they are very niche. They are not like Victor himself on his website recommends not to blind buy like a large bottle, but to like really try the things first because they are really not for everyone. They are quite unusual and that's what really drew me to them. I, I just have found them so special and I'm so honored to have been sent so many samples for free to try and I cannot wait to um, support them with my own money. I have never been a person that like buys like fancier designer or like niche um, makeup or thing like I'm a drugstore boy but I like very much look forward to supporting this like kind of independent fragrance company and I know I sound like I'm kissing but trying to get a sponsorship, that's not it. I'm just like really into this stuff. New into my perfume journey, let's go on it together. I will try to um, explain to you what these smell like to me, what they bring out into my in, on my skin, and mostly like the things that they evoke for me because all of these just like, yeah, like I said, let, let my imagination run wild and are so special. And I can't wait to share them with you, but we must begin with the one that I cannot stop thinking about. I, I hesitate to say that it's my absolute favorite because I feel like every time I try it, one of the ones that I really, really like, I'm like, oh no, this one's my favorite. And I tried a different one the other day and I'm like, oh no, but that one's my favorite. So so it's been very difficult, but but I, I truly think this one's my favorite because I cannot stop thinking about it. And I just, I, I need to just get it out of the way first because it's perfect. It's it's incredible. It's moth. Okay, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's begin with a little explanation of it. Um, I will put a picture of the art next to me. The perfumer behind it is Tomo Inaba. Sorry for any mispronunciations that may have occurred. Um, the juice, which I found out that's what it's called. Um, I'm not just being a dork, that's what... The juice um, in the large bottle is like this gorgeous, dark, grayish black. The top notes are black pepper, cinnamon, clove, cumin, lemon, nutmeg, and saffron. The heart notes are heliotrope, iris, jasmine, mimosa, muget, and rose. Muget, I think, is lily of the valley, maybe? Base notes are ambergris, honey, resins, guayac, musk, patchouli, nagar motha, oud, smoke, and vetiver. I sprayed the it on this fragrance strip yesterday and you can still smell it. It's a beautiful, incredible, long-lasting fragrance, but the magic really happens when it dries down and um, I am gonna spray it again because I just adore it so much. It like gives me butterflies. <laughs> so I've been taking notes as I've been smelling all of these because I wanted to capture my first impressions and my feelings and everything that I thought about all of these fragrances as I went along because they're so complex they do change a lot throughout the dry down. This fragrance, it's really interesting because one of the notes that I wrote down when I first tried it was I don't think it's for me or something like that, like I don't think I'd wear it, but the <laughs> the dry down absolutely is hypnotizing and completely changed my mind about everything about it. So when it opens you get this spiciness of the cloves, of the cinnamon, of the pepper. It comes in like pretty strongly, but it also has this deepness of the wood, but also this powderiness from the florals. The thing that's really special about it is when it dries down, it turns into this incredibly gorgeous, elegant, honeyed incense sort of smell. It's mournful as it dries down on your skin, and the way that the musk interacts with my skin, like, I don't know about your skin, but like, with my skin chemistry is just absolutely magical. Um, there's a muskiness to the moth, which I was not expecting, but really, really adore. And it's incredible, the images that it evokes for me. When I smell this fragrance, I can just imagine like being within a big haunted forest and it's nighttime and you can see the moon above you and you're very lost and you see like a a small cottage in the distance, and it's like a sort of witch's cottage. You start to explore it, you're smelling this this woodiness, the spiciness of the woods that are like kind of enchanted and strange, and as you explore the cottage, you go into the attic and you find this beautifully carved wooden chest that has all these delicate florals and interesting magical symbols carved into it, and, and you open the chest and inside of it are just the most 
gorgeous vintage gowns. They're like very like nightgown kind of things and you can smell that smell of like the old clothes like within... You can smell the... Sorry, I have to like hold it so close to my nose. I know that's like a big no-no, but my nose is like broken. Like I have to hold things right up to smell it. But it smells like you're opening this, this magnificent wooden chest with these gorgeous vintage gowns in it as as you're as you're looking at them admiring them they they start to move and these like haunted twins begin to inhabit the gowns and you are like seeing their like ghostly forms like materializing in front of you out of this like box and you're smelling them and they're smelling sweet and they're smelling musky and they're smelling honeyed and so spooky and somber and ghostly and you are just like in awe watching them and I can just like picture them like going out of the house and you like mesmerized hypnotized following them down the path to, to the to their lake and their dresses are like just like most regal almost like see-through silhouettes and, and and their skin is see-through and they have like long flowing hair that like maybe is kind of doing that thing where it like looks like it's underwater and they're like going into the pond and the moon is full and you like see it above you guys and 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 they just turn into ashes and you are completely in shock and completely haunted because the entire day that you smell this you just get wafts around your body and it feels like you're like just enveloped in like this incredible honeyed incensey smoke it's it makes me feel so dramatic it makes me feel so mournful I've been watching a lot of Phantom of the Opera um, remakes lately, like Repo the Genetic Opera. There's a scene where Blind Meg is about to like claw out her cybernetic eyes and she's dressed in this incredible like black bird kind of costume and suspended in the air with these like massive claws. And this feels like the fragrance that she would be wearing to do that. It's so haunting and so gorgeous and I want to smell like it forever and I can't wait to buy a big bottle of it. And it's crazy because when it opens, it's very like smoky and powdery and I didn't think that those were notes that I was... Because when I think of powder, I think of like baby powder. But then when I was like letting my imagination go with it, it, it smells like an old closet. It like it has like, yeah, that smell of like beautiful old vintage clothes that you can like smell the lingering perfume on and just feel like ghostly and haunted with memories and the incense of it is just amazing. This is one that I cannot wait to, I will, I will for now just like get like a, a little travel bottle of it because oh my lord, I love, love, love it. You can smell all those spices in the beginning, the cinnamon, the clove, the nutmeg. I don't get too much lemon. Um, and then the iris and the jasmine and the rose are incredible in the heart notes. And that's what makes it feel so romantic and so like beautiful. Like that's what makes you feel like you're seeing those beautiful dresses and those beautiful twin sisters. And then the base notes, the ambergris, the honey, the resins, the patchouli, the oud, the smoke, the vetiver. Those are all the very dark, haunting, spooky, feelings that this um, fragrance really evokes for me. I understand what people mean when they like talk about fragrances being works of art and stuff. Like, I know I'm sounding very, very pretentious right now, but I've gotten really into smells lately. <laughs> One of the things that kicked it off was the specific podcast episode from Stuff You Should Know, which I re-listened to recently. I'll link it below. How smells work is so interesting. The, the way that they trigger things and memories in our minds is so interesting. They just take you somewhere in an instant and they take you on this journey. And if you just like let your imagination run with them. They're just incredible. And on my skin, it just feels like musk and incense and it gets so honeyed and sweet and it lasts so long. Like I said, I, st I sprayed this tester originally yesterday and um, it still smells. Okay, that's Moth. This is the outfit that I have chosen for Moth. All right, so my first outfit for Moth uh, features this uh, kind of spooky purplish gray wig and some dark makeup. Uh, the earrings are from Spirit Halloween. They have like a hand and a knife and the moon and stuff. The necklace is from AliExpress. The cloak that I'm wearing is hand painted by me. Um, I made it out of a mouse eaten blanket that got left in my car for a university project. Underneath the cloak, I have this kind of silvery tube top dress that I found at the thrift store, and I just paired it with like a little belt that is also from the thrift store. Cape has this very fuzzy hood that I really, really like. It makes me feel like the fuzzy part of a moth, and it just makes me very happy. <laughs> I'm wearing a ton of rings, mostly from the thrift store and from like random places, 
wearing two layers of tights that are just like ripped from the drugstore and leg garter strap that I think I found on AliExpress or something like that a while ago. These are the arm warmers. I also made them. Um, they went with the moth costume that I made. And the boots that I'm wearing, I got on Facebook Marketplace. So this is the first outfit for moth, and I think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> My other moth outfit features this black wig, these uh, hairpins that I found at a vintage store when I was a kiddo, and these earrings from AliExpress. They have these like crow skulls on them and they feel very spooky. This is a crow skull necklace that's supposed to kind of resemble a rosary that I made. I'm wearing this brooch that Cage gave me that's all like vintage-y. The nightgown I'm wearing is one that I dyed black myself, and I'm wearing this kind of shawl that I sewed a piece of fringe around so it feels all like spooky and Victorian or something. I'm wearing mismatched thigh highs. The lace one was originally tights that I just cut off and then the other one is just regular thigh highs and the demonias I have had since I was 18. I'm obsessed with them. I think these I don't remember what the style is but I'll insert it here and um, yeah this feels like a very spooky cute moth outfit number two because I couldn't pick one and now for number three because I again I'm extra like that um so for this outfit I was kind of like maybe one of the twin sisters of the dark haired one again I'm wearing my fluffy purple wig um and a nightgown again with the spooky makeup um rosary made myself a uh, belt from the thrift store a uh, nightgown from the thrift store the little shawl kind of thing is from my mom she gave it to me quite a long time ago and I never get a chance to wear it the earrings that I made match the rosary necklace that I made wearing a bunch of rings that are found and gifted to me over the years. <laughs> I attached some random chains to my belt to make it feel a little extra alternative, and I'm wearing my demonias again, trust your resties, I love them, and I had to blow out the candle because I was scared of burning the house down. And this feels very dramatic, feels like I needed a handkerchief or like some dramatic um, props to pose with, so please indulge me while I do that, or fast forward if you don't care. Anyway. Okay, so next I will review Bat, because this is the fragrance that kind of got me like really interested in this perfume house. One reviewer that I heard talk about it mentioned that it would be like the perfume that Dracula might wear and it just seemed super intriguing to me. This is a fragrance that has been reformulated. The old version had a banana note in it which I am so thankful that this version does not because I do not like banana note of a fragrance, so I am very, was very happy that this was reformulated in that way. The perfumer behind Bat is Prin Lamros. The top notes are passion fruit, pink guava, fig, and soil accord. Very exciting. Like, ever since I found Demeter's Earthworm really recently, I was looking for a wonderful dirt smell that would last. The hard notes are hay, incense, minerals, and night blooming jasmine. And the base notes are animalic notes, leather, vetiver, mossy stones, and teak wood. And I have to tell you that this fragrance, when I first sprayed it on myself, it like <laughs> just smiled and was like, oh my god, yes, 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 that is what I wanted, that is what I was hoping for, because it is wet, mossy caves that you can literally like feel the stalactites, stalagmites, whichever the ones that hang down, you can feel them dripping like ancient water on you. On my skin, I did not get the fruit notes at all, which was fine, but I did try it on Cage's skin and on his. Um, the fruit notes really popped, but they dissipated very quickly. And when they dissipate, my lord, you get the most incredible, like, hay and incense is, yes, that is exactly what I smelled personally with it. And it feels like you're just like in this incredible dark cavern that yeah has just like this swirling smoke around it that makes you think that like someone else must be there like you can see all like the beautiful ancient architectural relics that have been like abandoned down there and like squirreled away by this by this creature you can just tell that th this cave has like something in it and it does and you can feel it uh, a vampire enveloping you in its leathery cape like it's absolutely incredible the way that it it, it has this like sexy musk smell that makes you feel like you are hugging an incredibly attractive vampire of whatever gender you like and just being wrapped up in them and getting to smell their neck and just oh my god it's incredible and it feels like you're in their cave in their lair it's I know that not everyone wants to smell like moss and caves and wetness and etc 
I don't understand why not because to me I'm like why like that's so cool that's like but I find this incredible I love the f like I, I find that some people say that this isn't a, a too much of a wearable fragrance to me there is like this musky coloniness um, that does make it feel like an actual fragrance and not like you just like rolled around in the dirt um, but the incense just makes it incredibly beautiful at least on my skin unfortunately when i when i sampled it i like i was wearing it to work and i could not stop smelling my arm the entire day i was just like doing this and, and it was funny because i felt like a vampire just like you know with my cape um but <laughs> it sucked because i was i was so um excited smelling it and i was like wow if i smelled this on cage like i would never stop smelling him like it's just like so incredible and i tried it on him and i guess just like different skin chemistry it just went like um a bit more cologne on him and he also was like yeah it kind of reminds me of of a cologne that i used to wear and it's just like yeah i was like yeah because i love it on myself so i will have to smell it on myself and be my own incredibly sexy vampire which is fine um i, I love it i think it's really really incredible i don't find it extremely offensive like i don't think unless you're like spraying like 20 sprays i'm, I'm a one spray kind of man yeah I, I don't find it like ridiculously offensive i haven't had anyone um, when I wear it, be like, oh my god, you smell disgusting. But when I smell it, I can just be like, oh, I can like feel myself like just just being in a vampire's arms in their cave with all their like weird candles and the patchouli makes it feel like there's like a glorious magical pool of like green water that like sounds disgusting but like emerald green where it's not like algae and grossness but just like this this fantasy thing yeah all of these fragrances i don't know if it's just because my brain works in like fantasy contexts all the time but all of these fragrances for the most part give me a really strong idea of a fantasy character um sorry if it's corny as hell um but i'm, I'm enjoying myself and i really really enjoyed letting my imagination go on these little tours so that's bat and these are the outfits that i chose for bat so for my first bat outfit, I've got my little bats that I've painted on my face. Again, going with the dark makeup. Fake nails, because this is a requirement for such a fun and fancy perfume, in my opinion. I also paired it with a bunch of rings and these spider gloves from Spirit Halloween. I have this little purse that Cage got me from Society6. Uh, for the outfit itself, I've got these big, chunky bat earrings with um, spikes hanging down them, and this handmade shawl with uh, embroidered bat wings that I made myself. Um, it's also got these little felt bats on the side of it and it just feels very appropriate for the vibe you know underneath it, it i have this like black dress that my cousin gave me and this um, necklace that i modified i finally found the creepsville bat belt in a good price for me so i'm wearing that and i love it i'm obsessed i think it's so cool this dress feels very fun and fancy it's got like all these like little rivets feel all like spooky and attractive in it um, just like the fragrance makes me feel so very very fun I never wear this dress weirdly and I didn't know how much I liked it because yes I really really do underneath of course I've got my fishnets and my big old boots I think this outfit's really cute makes me feel like a sexy powerful vampire so you know it is what it is and then for the next outfit, I kind of wanted to do like what I would wear if I was going on a date with someone who was wearing this fragrance. So of course, little vampire fangs, absolutely necessary. Um, my trusty rusty jacket that I have modified myself. I think a leather jacket like goes really well with this fragrance. It just feels like super badass. Um, but then I also wanted to do like kind of a cutesy element to it because um, to me, like bats feel very adorable. And so I wanted to do like kind of a simpler outfit to go with this as well. So I've got my skeleton hand jewelry, my um, dangly earrings, my little ghosty cartoon necklace, these uh, enamel pins that feel like kind of fun and spooky, this little bat wing backpack, I got it on Aliexpress, I need to fix the zipper, wearing my bat belt because it's absolutely necessary, and this dress that I found at the thrift store, um, that's I think a Wednesday Addams Halloween costume for kids, but I modified it like by adding some lace and making it fit me, so I think it looks really cute, plus I added a petticoat to give it like an extra little element of cuteness. Then I'm wearing my mismatched stockings again, and these really adorable shoes that I found at the thrift store, and that's outfit number two. And sorry I couldn't help myself for my last bat outfit, I felt like I needed to do something with this big black velvet cape that I have in my closet, so I have that paired with this long black with red undertones velvet dress that has like slits up the side. It just feels very cool and very like a villain or something. Again, with the fake nails and many, many rings. So I feel like a little demon. Um, and I've got a choker on that I think is from AliExpress and this necklace that I made myself. Again, with the dangly bat earrings and a bunch of little bats drawn on my face 
to really give that extra halloween -y, spooky thing, again, with the fangs, because they're my favorite. I will take every opportunity that I can get. The nails make me feel very exciting, and for the boots, or no, for the shoes, oh my gosh, I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing boots in this one. I'm wearing these shoes that I found at the thrift store. I love them. They're like satiny heels. I'm wearing them with my ripped fishnets because it's necessary. Um, so this is what the outfit looks like. I think it's very cute, very fun. The next one that I will talk about is the one that is actually Cage's favorite, and this one is squid. I love it also. I find it absolutely incredible. I'm very excited to smell it, but let me first read you a little bit about it. So the perfumer is Celine Burrell. The top notes are pink pepper, solar salicylate, and incense. The heart notes are black ink accord, salty accord, and a papanax. And the base notes are ambergris, benzoin, and musk. And I know what you might be thinking, ambergris. I've heard of that. Isn't that? Yes. Okay, whatever. Whales, sperm whales specifically, have a very specific diet. One of the things they eat is squid. Um, squid have beaks, and to not damage the whale's digestive system while they are eating the squid, um, the whale's organs produce a coating um, so that the beak doesn't scratch everything up. And when they expel that, it floats potentially to the top of the ocean, and over years and years and years gets baked by the sun, and it turns hard, and it's kind of a waxy substance that's been used in perfumery for a very long time. It's extremely expensive. It's The concept is gross when you find out what it is, but luckily this is all synthetic stuff, so I don't have to think about, like, that. I would like to give it a smell because I'm obsessed with it, and again, I sprayed this yesterday and I am still smelling it. This is incredibly beautiful, long-lasting. The juice, again, is a beautiful dark blue color. You can't see it in, like, the smaller bottle, but in the large bottle, it's just, like, this incredible, very oceany, obviously, color, and the art is honestly one of my favorites. The, the wizard squid is incredibly cool. This fragrance, it's also one of my favorites, and one of my friends who came over my coworker um, tried it and it was one of their favorites also. It's like nothing I've ever smelled before. I didn't think that I liked aquatics in fragrances and I think that the reason I like this is because it's so different than any aquatic that I've ever smelled before or what I associate with aquatics and all that kind of thing because the opening has this pink pepper, this salt that feels like an ocean spray and it feels like you are on the cliffs of some incredible ocean watching the waves crash over each other you know when the waves are like deep blue but the foam that crashes over itself is like that incredible white and it is spraying up and it's hitting you in the face and perhaps you've just gotten down from this lighthouse and you're exploring the ocean or you're not exploring it you're looking out at it at first and it starts with just looking out at it but the thing that's like really incredible about this fragrance in my opinion is when the incense comes out and I think that zoologists, one of my favorite things they do is like their incense accords. I think they're absolutely incredible. And the incense in zoologist I find is absolutely divine, in my opinion, especially the way that it melds on my skin. So it opens with this like ocean spray. This was the fragrance that I wore today at work and the entire day I was just like sniffing my arm and I kept feeling like a pirate. But the way that like, yeah, it, it opens with that, with that salty spray and watching the waves curling, but then the incense begins to come out. And the incense feels so dark and deep and mysterious, and it feels like you see a shape like in the water, and you're not sure what it is, and it's like, an incredibly gorgeous siren, and she's singing to you, and you feel her pull just like completely magnetically. Yeah, swelling and contra contracting, because there's something about this fragrance, I don't know how to describe it, other than the fact that it like gives this feeling like, if you've seen a jellyfish move, I haven't seen a squid move, I'm, I assume it's kind of in a similar fashion though. But if you've seen jellyfish move, the way they kind of like pulsate through the water, this fragrance gives that sense, or like the sense of like the rolling waves. It makes me feel like a pirate being seduced by a siren and being like pulled down into the currents of the ocean. There's something so melancholic and lonely about this fragrance, like you are being pulled to the ocean to live in an Atlantean city that just has ancient ruins. The incense just makes me think of ancient, like, religious, beautiful things. The musk is incredible. It's... The, the, it feels mysterious. 
it feels oceanic but not in a beachy way at all it's not like nor like when you think of beachy fragrances i usually think of like suntan lotion coconut kind of tropical vibes this is not that this is this is being dragged to the bottom of the ocean by a beautiful siren and just not caring because everything around you is so hypnotizing and intoxicating to look at and you can feel like the incense swirl around you like that ink. I guess I do get kind of that inky note and when I say salt and pepper it, it sounds like I'm describing a food. It's It doesn't feel edible at all. It's not gourmand at all in that way. I've like been finding out all these new terms. Gourmand is like these kind of edible fragrances like you know like caramel fragrances and stuff like that. But yeah the, I don't know what ambergris smells like. I don't know if it's musky or what. I should probably google that but I love this. It feels yeah mysterious. It feels ancient. It's interesting because I've seen some reviewers say that this is one of the fragrances that they feel is more flat or like more like doesn't tell a story in the way that some of the others do. And this this one to me is just incredibly special. Yeah, Cage has been spraying it a lot. He's a tattoo artist, so he can't, or he feels that he can't wear fragrances like out and about, so he only sprays it when he's like wearing it at home. When he does, I love to just go over and smell him. I love this fragrance. It's another artwork, it's another masterpiece. I know that I am like talking this up so much, but like, yeah, I didn't pay attention to my sense of smell for like so much of my life and tuning into it, it's such a magical, evocative thing. I, I think that there's like so many memories that smells can evoke and that they can really bring to you if you take the, the moments to just like let yourself daydream about it. And and it's been incredible because all of these scents, like they, they transform over time and I just can't wait to try them out more and, and find out all the other different facets that they have because it feels like each time you're like, oh, I get a little bit more musk this time or oh, I, I do see the, um, the ink. I hadn't felt the ink before until just now sm smelling it on this paper, but it's another one that really like shines on the skin. I think all of them really do shine on the skin, but I would like to kind of review them in one go. Incredible, incredible. I adore squid. And I can't believe I found a uh, fragrance that Cage like because Cage doesn't wear like anything ever. Like he'll wear Earthworm by Demeter, but that's it. And this is the outfit that I have chosen for Squid. All right, so the Squid outfit is very like piratey or sailor inspired. Got this um, earring that's got gall on it and all these rings that make me feel like a pirate that's collected treasures from all their different travels. Same with loads of different bracelets that are mostly from the thrift store and a bunch of different necklaces that are primarily from the thrift store. A lot of them are also from my mom. And all of the blingy things just make me feel like a sailor that's collected things from their treasure hunts. I also have this belt that I'm wearing as um, sort of a scarf because it reminds me of like a piece of kelp even though it's supposed to be leaves. And this is a felted bag that my mom actually made me. The over shawl thing is originally from the thrift store and I dyed it black and the top that I'm wearing is um, originally from my yoga teacher and I dyed it black. Same with the skirt was dyed black and I'm wearing some mismatched stockings. I hung a bunch of different necklaces off my belt to make it look extra treasure filled and I'm wearing these little Doc Martin boots that roll down at the top and I really like them. I got them when I was like 16 but I still have them and I'm very happy about that. So very piratey outfit. I also have like a variation on this outfit because I couldn't really pick but I just added like this big gray scarf, some spirally earrings, a big long gray gray skirt that I found at the thrift store, and this belt that I got at a festival when I was in my hippie phase. This makes me feel like more like a pirate. A lot of fun, um, especially when I tie up my skirt with a knot in it. Um, it kind of makes me feel like I'm wearing drop crotch pants, even though it's a skirt. And yeah, I definitely feel like a cool pirate video game character in this outfit. So good stuff all around. This is the variation on the squid. The next fragrance is kind of on the opposite of an end of the spectrum. It's not moody and dark and mysterious, but it is incredible and beautiful and one of Cage's favorites also. Though I don't know if I'll be wearing it a ton. I do appreciate it so much for what it is, but I, I just don't think it suits me very much, but I would love to tell you about it because it is so evocative and it's so gorgeous. This is what it looks like. Ah, can you look at this art? Absolutely beautiful. I feel like the way that they styled the dress, the sleeves look like flower petals in themselves and I just find it so incredibly beautiful. You can see that the flowers that the bird is wearing are some of the notes in the perfume. Let me tell you a little bit about it. So Hummingbird, the perfumer behind it is Shelley Waddington. The top notes are apple, cherry, citrus, muguet, Still don't know if I'm saying that right. Plum, rose, and violet leaf. The heart notes are honeysuckle, honey, lilac, mimosa, peony, and ylang. And the base notes are amber, cream, cumarin, moss, sandalwood, and musks. So this fragrance is very, very special. I must spray it because it's, it's such a happy scent. 
It opens with these really, really beautiful floral notes. Are also fruity. And the thing that springs to mind is just like spring turning into summer, it's bubbles, it's iridescence, it's a beautiful fairy queen with like all of these incredible flowers in her hair and just like this majestic robe sitting upon flower throne and offering you like some powdery delicate sweets that look completely like untouchable and are all like yeah just powdered because that's what you smell, you smell like that beautiful powderiness. But you smell like the sweetness of the candy and it feels completely forbidden like fairy food is, you know? You know when you smell a really delicious soap that you want to eat but you know that you shouldn't but it just smells so delicious and you're just like I want, I, I wish I could eat this but you know that the second you eat it it will just be all over for you. That's what the fairy queen's candies smell like. And they're beautiful and powdered and I don't know if as a kid when watching Narnia the way they described Turkish delights you were just like that's what I imagined the sweets to be like, just like that fantasy version. And the blossoms are like so sweet and you can feel like honey just like dripping from her voice and in that same way you can smell it in the fragrance and she's like speaking to you and offering them to you and you do take one. And later you're like drunk on fairy wine and dancing and feeling so joyous and you can like just feel all those flowers enveloping you and it's intoxicating, it's almost dizzying. Not in a bad way, it's not like headachey or anything like that, but just in the way that like psychedelic paintings and like 1960s art with like all the rainbows and all the colors, in, in the way that that is. Everything is just bright, but it's also like elegant. The honey I find is incredible. I wish I got more of the whipped cream. Um, I don't really find it but obviously everyone's nose is different and who knows maybe on a different day when it's warmer or colder or whatever I might smell it a little bit more. It does make me think of Persephone. But the thing that's really beautiful about this fragrance is that it doesn't stay that really floral that whole time. It does mellow when it gets into your skin and it does mellow into this patchouli and mossy and lichen-y thing at the end which I do really really love because if it was those powdery florals the whole time I don't think I'd be able to go with it. You know I, I don't think I'd, I'd wear it regardless just because of those um, very strong florals and just like not feeling like that fruitiness suits me. Ha, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, I think that if you do like fresh, floral, beautiful scents um, that you would like this. But the patchouli at the end feels like after you've drunk all the fairy wine and danced with the fairy queen and all the different people of her court, um, you're snuggling up in her cloak and you're smelling the muskiness of her skin on her cloak and you're smelling like the incredible mossiness around you in this enchanted forest just enveloping you. I'm sorry I'm using gendered pronouns. In my opinion, fragrance doesn't have a gender. We definitely think that like, ooh, flowers are for ladies and woods and musks are for men, but in my opinion, that's not true. All of these fragrances are poetic journeys and experiences and they change and they shift and I think they're different on different people. But if you want more input. Um, I would definitely check out Fragrantica for reviews, um, that way you can get lots of people's different opinions. But I do really enjoy this, but it is very powdery. In that way that reminds me of soap. Um, like an elegant, expensive, fancy soap. It is balanced out by that musk, but there is a soapiness to it. Kind of reminds me of like an extremely beautiful woman washing her clothes with a vintage soap outside and you can smell like the springtime around her and the washboard and the wood and the spring turning into summer around her. Yeah, it, it's it's a soapy scent, it's a floral scent, it's a powdery scent, has a lot of very beautiful elements. But if that sounds like something that you are interested in, I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, but yeah, probably not for me. Um, okay, this is the outfit that I have chosen for Hummingbird. So for Hummingbird, I wanted to go for like a really ethereal sort of fairy look, doing like red and white makeup, uh, still dark lipstick because I love it and it's a must. Uh, I put a bunch of fun things in my hair like um, fake flowers and fake mushrooms as well as elf ears and fun earrings that have like a little goddess looking character kind of on them. For my dress, this is one of my absolute favorite dresses of all times. I found it for $10 at this thrift store that I used to volunteer at and I think it's like someone's old dance costumes because it's definitely like built like a dance costume sort of leotard with like a flowy skirt kind of way but I honestly feel like a freaking princess in it in a fun elf way not in like a gendered way so it, it's fine really like this dress absolutely feel like a fairy tale character in it and the colors just make me feel like very 
romantic. The shape is super flowy. I'm also wearing it with these thigh-high mismatched stockings. The boots I got on Facebook Marketplace, they were 50 bucks, and they're like knockoff demonias, and I feel like they go with the outfit, because this perfume just gives me the vibe of like sparkly and pink and flowy and stuff, so that's why this outfit is like this. <laughs> so next I would like to tell you about Musk Deer, and this one I was super unexpectedly in love with. It was one that I wouldn't have thought to try out when um, Victor very graciously offered to send me some free fragrances. I asked my boyfriend Cage, like, hey, do you want to look through the website and see if there's anything you're interested in? And Cage said, yeah, like, a musk deer. And I was like, wow, like, interesting. Um, and I was not expecting it at all to be what it is, but I would love to tell you about it. The perfumer is Pascal Garin. Sorry. The top notes are cardamom, calamus oil, and rose. The heart notes are sambac, jasmine absolute, patchouli, Cedarwood Atlas and Labdamum Absolute. And the base notes are Ambret Absolute, Oris Absolute, Laos Oud, and Australia Sandalwood. When I was thinking of a musk deer, I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be a very dirty, skanky, heavy kind of fragrance with like a lot of musky notes that you know, oh my God. Again, sprayed it yesterday. This is one that you can still smell. Um, I will say Hummingbird couldn't really still smell it from yesterday. I think the florals, florals as a note, I think just dissipate um, a bit quicker. Musk tends to stick around for longer and this smell, especially on skin, this smell is incredibly addicting. I must spray some because, mm, it opens with a spice, which again is like really interesting because I didn't think that I liked spice. Like I, I think I would like to like spice, but I never thought I did, but it opens with this incredibly inviting spice that mellows really quickly into the most incredible forest scent. To me, I just smell these enchanted woods. Again, just like everything feels so magical. I get a little bit of the sense that it is winter. You can smell a little bit of that glistening snow and the coldness, but it's interesting because that coldness has a warm counterpart, as if like you're on a walk in the winter, but you're with your lover and they're holding you very closely. You know that you're gonna go back and snuggle together by the fire and feel like that skin on skin warmth. Also, sorry if me saying the word lover like grossed anyone out. <laughs> I apologize deeply. One of the notes that I wrote down when I tried this set, this fragrance was sexy wood elf question mark, centaur question mark, because Weirdly, and I guess it does make sense when you read the description, but there is something very... Oh, it's so weird to say sexy on my YouTube channel, but there is something very, like, romantic about this fragrance. I don't know if it's the rose, if it's the musks, what it is, but it, it is the fragrance that just makes me feel like I want to get snuggled up to my love and just spend hours, like, nuzzling their neck. The spiciness is so inviting, the rose is so romantic, but the wood just like gives the feeling of just being in that big forest. Perhaps riding on the back of the centaur while they like whisk you through these like Siberian trees. Wood in this fragrance is so good. The incense again is so good. I cannot get enough of it. What else notes did I write? Yes, it's warm. It makes me think of fur on, on bare skin. It's so good on Cage. Oh my God. When Cage sprayed himself with this, I was like, I am getting a little travel spray because I'm going to spray it on you and I will smell you all the time because I adore this. It's it's not at all like an aggressive wood fragrance. I, I think a lot of times when you think of like woody fragrances, you think of like pine and like old spice and like that kind of wood. That is not this at all. This is a romantic, delicious, smoky wood. It's weird when you think about musk pods of deer and like them being pretty gross. So it's cool, again, that this is not actual musk pods of deer. It's ambrette, which is a, a pod of some sort that, that gives the same scent, I've heard. This smell is absolutely magical. It makes me think of a magical forest. It's a little bit wintry, yes, but not in like a Christmassy way or anything. The way that it's wintry makes it feel like there's a winter outside, but you are wrapped up warm in your blanket, safe and protected in a romantic, like almost head spinning mood. But the snow is peaceful and the woods are expansive and you see those like aspen trees where like they, they look like they have eyes all beautiful and peaceful and the musk is intoxicating and you do get that like intoxication feeling of like a uh, warm warm alcohol in your belly while you're walking through the cold winter woods and you're wrapped up in your warm warm jacket yeah your cheeks are pink and your fingers are cold 
but your partner's hands are so warm and you're just holding their hands. Sorry if this is all like very um, romantically centered. You could be just holding your own hands and hugging your own self in the forest. And that is equally beautiful. But it is a very gorgeous romantic scent. I cannot wait to have um, a little decant of this I'm, or like a travel spray of this. Delicious. The wood projects so much on my skin. Sorry, it's sometimes hard to remember what projects on the this and versus what projects on my skin, which is why I took notes. You can you can feel the snow crunching underfoot. You can feel the romance of being with someone you love. It's a really magical fragrance. Magical, I think, is the, is. Uh, yeah, a really good word for The reason I don't say it's like cold or anything is because there's no, there's nothing like mentally or like kind of that gives that bite in that way. It's all just, just hazy warmth and, and, and bonfires in the snow and being, or bonfires and, and, and fur rugs and, and old, old lodges and, and being tucked away. No one, no one will interrupt you in your beautiful romp. I'm so excited, I'm throwing my sample. So that is Musk Deer. Um, this is the outfit that I've chosen for Musk Deer. And on to that. So for Musk Deer, I did like really soft brown eye makeup with like dark red lipstick because it makes me feel romantic. And I painted little hearts under my eyes because romance and that kind of thing. Um, these earrings I made myself. They're just from some possum bones because they felt kind of woodlandy, I guess. Um, and then I also wanted to wear my foam antlers. These are just from a costume store. Because it's such a romantic fragrance, I wanted to wear my heart-shaped locket. Um, I also have a bunch of rings on because they make me feel pretty and I have this little um, jacket that I found at the thrift store that I have attached a little pin to of a jumping deer. Um, I think the pin belonged to my grandma and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the jacket just makes me feel like very adorable and cozy and almost like an anime character or cartoon character or something. Behind my possum earring I also have like a little Bambi type deer baby earring which I love and feels very appropriate. Wearing a plaid skirt because it makes me feel very cute and cozy material but I can also show off my tattoos with it which my boyfriend did so they feel very like special and romantic in that way for me. Um, I have these little gold socks with little songbirds and my black Doc Martens which are like my everyday shoes. Very weird to see myself without tights um, but this is the full outfit um, and then underneath the jacket i have this mustard yellow sweater that belongs to my boyfriend because it's his favorite color because it's such like a loving romantic fragrance i really wanted to like kind of inspire this outfit around um kind of aesthetics my boyfriend like very like cozy and um his favorite color is incorporated so and next, yeah so next is nightingale which is absolutely gorgeous one of the things that i mentioned loving about the details if you look the nightingale's kimono that they're wearing there's japanese plum blossoms which are one of the notes and i think that their headdress is saffron which is another one of the notes i'm not super good at identifying flowers but i was like they, they must be related I, mean, I looked up some of the flowers and the notes and i was like i, I think these look the same so very exciting this fragrance is really gorgeous in the full bottle it's like this really pretty pink color and it's an incredibly interesting uh fragrance it's another one by tomo inaba which made my favorite moth as i mentioned okay the top notes are bergamot lemon and saffron the heart notes are japanese plum blossom red rose and violet and the base notes are ambergris moss incense, labdanum, patchouli, musk, sandalwood, and oud. This fragrance is another one that I don't think I would wear but I think is so fascinating in its composition and I am so thankful to own just to to be able to smell it and be like wow little journey. It's exciting it's so freaking cool. My new appreciation for the sense of smell is truly wonderful. It is one that again because I think of the heavy florals seems not to last as much on the scent strips as some of the other ones but regardless, let's give it a spray. This smell is very nostalgic for me. It brings to mind immediately like vintage powdery makeups and lipsticks. Which is interesting because I don't know if that's what Japanese plum blossoms smell like. With, with the, from the fruits, you, I'd assume it would smell like really fruity and floral, but to me it smells powdery and elegant and vintage. And I don't know what uh, Chypre is supposed to smell like. I, I learned that word from the Fragrantition, which is one of my absolute favorite new um, fragrance reviews on YouTube. If you watch nothing else from her, I would highly recommend you watch Gabby's um, Halloween um, fragrance recommendations because her vibe is impeccable and I adore her and I will be linking a bunch of fragrance reviewers that I love um, like Ouch 110 is incredible I found him um, through my little YouTube 
searches and also beauty now and yeah i'll have a whole tab on my channel now from now on of like uh, fragrance youtubers that i love because it's a new new thing of mine nightingale though it makes me think of just like the most glamorous hollywood actress in the 1960s in her dressing room surrounded by her lights uh, my mom i love her very much she didn't often when i was growing up and doesn't now often wear makeup um so the few pieces of makeup she does have are very like vintagey feeling and there's a smell that old lipstick has that is so nostalgic to me and that i love so much because i remember playing with her makeup as a kid and the smell really reminds me of it it's just you know, like this beautiful vintage elegant hollywood woman putting on this beautiful powdery makeup and her and her lipstick and all these things getting ready to be photographed on like a chaise long just covered in diamonds and pearls like it's so elegant and vintage and glamorous i remember one of my favorite fragrance reviewers that i mentioned which one one oh he meant he talked about this um fragrance reminding him of like lady Fru Fru at bath time with her like little pink kitten heel slippers and like hair and rollers and like yes it's very that i don't know what she is supposed to smell like normally i don't know if it's supposed to go with that like very vintagey um sense as i've said i'm very new to the whole fragrance world but absolutely like really enjoying my my journey into it being really into fragrance before and then just getting like super into it which is how i tend to get into most things i'm like not into them at all and i get super 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 deep dive um but regardless yes this makes me think of like smoke coiling out of a vintage parlor it makes me think of elegant carved pillars in slightly tacky old hollywood ha houses but like in that really kitschy tacky perfect way the lady Fru Fru way as as h110 would say i just it, it does make me think of an incredibly elegant vintagey lady not that like perfumes have an age because like obviously if you're wearing it it's the age that you are it is the gender that you are it is like you know perfumes don't have to be masculine and feminine and oh this perfume is young and this perfume is old no it's it's whatever you are or whatever you want to be you know with it um the opening is very romantic and powdery and makeupy and vintagey soft but again it mellows into that freaking incense that i love because again it's like one of those fragrances that i'm like i don't think i would wear it. and then it mellows into the incense and i'm like okay yes i, I can see them myself wearing that <laughs> i do enjoy it there's like a powdery soapy vintageness to it that probably doesn't fit my vibe but the soapiness to it it's very evocative of walking in a very warm summer evening when the sun sets at like 11 p.m type of thing and you have nothing to do that evening and you're walking like these long like kind of cobblestones and stuff and you smell someone who's doing their laundry and you can smell like the laundry fumes like coming out of the building and the sun is setting and everything's like really beautiful that's what it smells like you know when you smell like the laundry coming out of people's houses and it smells like romantic and beautiful and like whatever it's a beautiful smell oh and there goes the incense oh my gosh it just changes and changes it's an experience i would highly highly recommend sampling these for yourself like like i said i'm not sponsored so i don't get any commission or anything like if you sample them that's your own thing i'm i have no incentive to do this i am just telling you about a thing that i like because i like it and um yeah i'm not like saying it buy it because i said so um i just I like it. It's an old Hollywood vintage feel that, yeah, I don't think I would wear, but I find just like so fascinating for the story that it tells. And the incense is so gorgeous. As if like that, that gorgeous Hollywood actress that's dri dripping in pearls, she pulls out a very fancy cigarette and is smoking something that's not a cigarette because it doesn't smell gross and smoky like that. It smells opulent, elegant, mystery, mystery smoke. This is very elegant, elegant classy, vintagey, and soapy and powdery. I was expecting this to be very much fruitier and for some reason, I guess because of the Japanese iconography and the idea of, the, yeah, the Japanese plum blossoms and stuff, for some reason I was expecting a cherry blossom note. There's no cherry blossom notes in this, so like get that out of your head, rabbit. But yeah, I was, I was very surprised that it smelled so glamorous and old Hollywood and vintagey. It makes sense, I guess, and it's it's, it's a very pretty scent. Very, very pretty scent. All right, so for my nightingale look, I've brought out the purple lavender lilac-y wig again, and I have these Ouija planchette sort of earrings that I made. I'm wearing a bunch of bracelets that are all like silver in tone and feel kind of very fun, and the necklaces I'm wearing are very romantic. I have a heart-shaped choker and a locket. This dress is technically a nightgown that I got at the thrift store, but I just think it's like so adorable and fluffy and flirty and pink and just mm. This belt that is from the thrift store originally that I have paired with a chain to just give it that little bit of edge. 
again with my ripped mismatched stockings and the shoes that I'm wearing I love them so much I found them on Facebook marketplace again my hero my best friend um demonia sprites and yeah that's the outfit for nightingale just feels very romantic and sweet and lady frou-frou with all the pink all right and the next one is another completely different note one I love so much it's Chipmunk! It's so freaking cute! The thing that's adorable about this that some other reviewer pointed out um, was that, like, okay, the chipmunk is dressed like a Girl Scout. Amazing. Love it. The little Girl Scout, what is this called? Sash? The badges on it are notes that are in the fragrance. Incredible. Like, it has a little kints, it has hazelnuts, it has what looks like an oak leaf, and a chestnut question mark? I don't know my notes very well. The hat is like a little acorn cap. I die! I die! Incredible. Mmm, okay. This fragrance is so special. It it needs to be sprayed because I need to smell it because I adore it. It is it's very nice. Oh, it's so special! An autumnal and evocative. So the perfumer behind this is Pia Long. The top notes are kints, pink pepper, red mandarin, cardamom, and nutmeg. The heart notes are chamomile, hazelnut, fir balsam, oak absolute, and earthy notes. And the base woods are cedarwood, amorous, patchouli, vetiver, benzoin, apopinax, guaiacwood, and animal notes. This fragrance is so special. It's so good on the skin. On the skin it gets this incredible musk, but the first opening note is just like the stepping on the crunchiest, perfect autumn leaves in this forest that is just covered with yellow and green and orange and everything is changing color. And you can smell all the gorgeous nuts that are ripe off the trees around you. And it smells like almost like someone's roasting hazelnuts and you, and you can go like collect some from this like magical vendor that's like set up in the forest. And maybe when you eat them, they shrink you down and you go into an oak burrow and there's like little chipmunks that are like dressed in human clothes, like, like Sylvanian family style, like in a storybook. And they're baking delicious hazelnut pies and little beautiful chipmunk pastries. And it just smells like a storybook. It smells like autumn. It smells nutty and almost vanillic in a way to me. It feels like admiring foliage on a walk. There is an enveloping warmth around it. The kints at the beginning is so incredibly beautiful because it gives this like juicy fruitness that is like that perfect autumnal fruit, that perfect like apple pear combination. It feels so warm and brown and okay so not the smell but the feeling that you get when you bury your face in the fur of a beloved pet. Like if I have my face buried in tuna and she's purring, she doesn't really smell like anything, but the feeling I get, that enveloping warmth, that's what I feel when I smell this fragrance. Because autumn has such a warm place in my heart, it feels incredible, like I'm just there in that moment and the forests also are like really nostalgic for me, so that also like gives that really special feeling. And I remember, because I'm Italian originally, and one of the memories that sticks out to me very much is um, the street vendors that are roasting hazelnuts on the street and selling them to you and you get this beautiful paper cup that's warm with these like roasted chestnuts and roasted hazelnuts and all these different beautiful things and you get to just like walk in the leaves and eat them and they're they smell so good and they're sweet and they're vanillic and they're fatty in that way that nuts are in like that delicious way. I can't decide if this is a gourmand frag fragrance or not. Like I can't tell if it smells edible or not. Like there's part of me that wants to like eat it and bite into it. But then there's also that foresty note that makes you like not want to do that at all. But the hazelnut is delicious. But it's not like a straight up food smell and I wouldn't classify it as that. I feel like Zoologist is so special at capturing nature in these different seasons. There's like the, the cold wintry forest that you're like wrapped up warm in and musk beard, there's this autumnal forest that is just like cozy and warm and feels like a storybook in Chipmunk. There's the springtime of hummingbird. Like there's so many just evocative nature feelings and it's just like such a cool, it, it's really amazing the way they've managed to formulate things to give such specific and such intense feelings. And like obviously everyone's different and everyone's gonna react differently and like whatever whatever. Feel free to watch other reviewers. There's tons out there and they're so um, cool to, to listen to other people describe smells in my opinion. It's like my new favorite hobby. The only thing about this is I feel like this is more of a fragrance that I would rather smell like in the room than on myself. But then when I do spray it on myself all I want to do is like nuzzle my own arm and smell myself over and over so like maybe not. But just like the coziness of it 
makes me feel like I want a candle that smells like this so it can like make my room smell like that. Not that I want to smell like that necessarily, though I will also do that. This is the outfit that I have chosen for Chipmunk. All right, let's go. All right, so for Chipmunk, the makeup is much more brown and naturally toned than I normally do. I wore some blush, some brown eyeshadow, orangey lipstick. I also have a mushroom accessory in my hair, this fairy choker that I found at the thrift store. The rest of the outfit is pretty much completely thrifted. This is a bag that I found on a school trip years and years ago. It's very vintage-y. The cardigan is handmade, but I also found it at the thrift store for some ridiculous steal, like $12 or something. It's incredibly beautiful. It has this really gorgeous autumn scene. Lovely pattern all around the back. I adore it. Corduroy dress with some little pins on it. One's an acorn and one's a little witch riding a broomstick. And I have a lot of rings as usual. Um, I'm wearing these arm warmers underneath my um, sweater that are just lacy and kind of make me think of moss or lichen or something. And this is what the outfit looks like without the sweater. Dress is thrifted and I love it because it has pockets. It's corduroy and it just feels very fun. I'm also wearing some high socks that I believe my mom got me for Christmas years and years and years ago, but they're red and they're very cute. And these boots I hardly ever wear, but I'm gonna keep around because I plan to do a Claire cosplay for Monster High soon and these are perfect for that. They make me feel kind of mischievous. <laughs> um, they're very like pointy. I thought they kind of worked with chipmunk because they always make me think of like a, a little mischievous little animal. Okay, so next I would like to talk to you about Dragonfly. And if you look, this and another one that I did not get, um, but it's called Chameleon, have like this holographic situation going on, which I love holographic, so I just think that's really cool. Dragonfly, it is uh, by Celine Burrell. The top notes are grapefruit, basil, angelica seed, ginger, and rice. The heart notes are aquatic florals, geranium, jasmine, sandback, mimosa, orris, absolute, rose, and violet leaves. And the base notes are rainwater, moss, patchouli, tonka, vetiver, benzoin, and cashmere. Again, trying my best with the pronunciations. We do what we can. This one is very aquatic. And it's interesting because when, I, when I've heard a lot of other people review it, they say it's so like light and delicate and iridescent. To me, it is ridiculously powerful. I don't understand where they're getting like light and iridescent. Like I get more of like the dragon than the dragonfly from this. Like, but like a water dragon, but um, let, let me spritz and, and, and experience. Oh, yes, but it does have that peacefulness, but it is strong. It is very strong. Like, I think the aquatics are just extremely biting. It makes me think of like, yes, lily pads on like the pond with like morning mist that's like crawling over everything and you're observing from a distance and slowly like dipping your feet into the water because you hear laughter from further away and you're like not sure what's going on. You start to sink and submerge and the water is all cool and you get to the point where you're submerged like to here and your hair is all like floating around you and you're catching all these glimpses of like shimmers and sparkles from far away. And there's all these water nymphs and fairies and just gorgeous women dressed in flowy elegant gowns and they're playing in the water and splashing each other and giggling. But when you look at them, they also have sharp teeth and there's something like just like biting and unexpected and like, what, what is that about it? It reminds me of rippling water. And there's such a strong note in my opinion of Perticor or like the smell after rain. I know they say rainwater's in it, but I get, the first time I smelled it, I was just like, this is the exact smell, the smell after rain. Uh, one of the notes that I got in it was just completely evocative of that. But there's the freshness, but it's mysterious. It feels like you are in the reeds and you are poking your head out and you're hearing the mischievous laughter from far away and you are seeing the sparkling. There is something very sparkly, shiny about this fragrance. Yeah, like the wings, I guess. It's, it's, it is evoking that. In the air, it's very sparkly, but on my skin, I remember getting rice and a green note and the lotus. But I mostly smell that like ozonic fragrance and I don't think I could wear this because that ozonic note reminds me so much of like perfumes that Italian dudes wear. And it's interesting because when I showed this fragrance to my friend Aiko, they were like, I've never smelled anything like this before. And I was like, that's interesting because there's something that's like so reminiscent. I don't know if like aquatics are like a big thing in like what I think of as like Italian dudes colognes from like when I've been there when I was 12 I just have that very <laughs> strong memory. The more you smell the the more different notes you get and, and it's very much of a journey. The lotus and the rice and it, and it does interplay and like different noses will pick up different things and on different days you pick up different things. It's sharp, it, it makes me feel like my nostrils are flaring when I smell it uh, which is an interesting sensation. It, it does make me think of like magical 
fairy nymph women in a pond playing. And there's a lot of mystery about it. I was expecting something so like light and delicate and floral and that's not at all what you get. You get this quite punch in the face, at least for me, like at that first like, whoa, like that aquatic and that perticore and that ozonic and that everything. was not expecting that at all. It's very interesting. I, I enjoy it. If you, like an, if you like ozonic fragrances, I would highly, highly recommend that. Like really aquatic ozonic that are rainwatery and wet. Yes, you will like this. Because normally I don't like that, but I love squid and the aquatics of that were just like, mm, incredible. Okay, so that's dragonfly. Very interesting. The outfit that I have chosen for dragonfly. So for Dragonfly, the first outfit is very like whimsical. It has um, a lot of white eyeshadow, white makeup, um, with some fake pearls glued on my face, and the hair incorporates a ton of very silly little things from the dollar store primarily, like these little foam frogs, but I also have these gorgeous thrifted hair clips and some clip-on earrings that I found at the thrift store. I have loads of rings and I painted my fingernails white for once, it feels very strange. I've got some fangs because like I said, this fragrance has a little bit of a bite and I wanted to um, kind of incorporate that in this sort of fairy nymph look. This necklace that I'm wearing is, I think, River Pearls. I found it at the thrift store and I adore it. I'm wearing this sheer embroidered dress with pond-like lake motif, and underneath that I have this vintage nightgown that my friend gave me. It's like white and satiny. I think it works really well in this outfit. I have like very delicate little bracelets from the thrift store on and some really pretty rings from all sorts of different places. I also wanted to do a look with a flower crown in because I think it really works for like a, a pond fairy. I have a handmade crown of reeds and blossoms and these sort of situations. This is it. I'm wearing a lot of sparkly highlighter on my face. And then for my shoes, I'm wearing these Doc Martens that are from forever ago. My very sweet mom got them as a present for me. This is the other outfit that I have for Dragonfly. I have, again, my little frogs in my hair and some little mint green rosy hair clips. These are some earrings that I DIY'd. Again, lots of rings and lots of necklaces. I like to imagine that a fairy might like steal all these different necklaces from victims that she's lured like a siren or something. And I have this really fun purse that I found at the thrift store. It's like metal and I never get to wear it so I thought I'd include it in this. Since it's dragonfly, I thought I'd include a little dragon friend on my belt. Um, he's handmade out of leather and I traded for him at a renaissance fair. I'm wearing a necklace on my belt to just add a little bit extra detail and sparkle. And I'm wearing this very layered belt from AliExpress. The dress is another dance costume that I found at the thrift store. I find it adorable. Um, I can't believe someone would give such a beautiful piece away. It makes me feel like an absolute fairy. And I'm wearing uh, stripy tights. Uh, this is a better shot of the necklaces and all the jewelry that I'm wearing. Yes, very exciting. My boots, again, I'm wearing these um, fold-over Doc Martens. They kind of feel like pirate boots or fairy boots or something, so I feel like they work out well with the dragonfly. And then the next one that I will talk about <laughs> is, I don't know, okay, this, you know, everyone says not everything can be like a winner, and for me, I think this is one that just like did not agree with my skin chemistry, unfortunately. So, um, it's sloth. I don't know exactly what this outfit is supposed to be. I'm assuming it's something specific. I can't tell if it's just like a general safari kind of guy. But one thing that I love is that on his little neck scarf, he has lichens, which is one of the notes in the fragrance. And it was interesting because one reviewer that I watched mentioned that this was kind of a more sophisticated version of Bat. They were saying that if like Bat was like kind of a young high school guy's cologne, this was like an elegant man. And I disagree because I thought that that was like an elegant, sexy man cologne and well, I'll, I'll just get into it after I tell you the story. Okay, so this is uh, by Prim Lomros, the same perfumer as Bat. So the top notes are chamomile, acai berry, lavender and violet leaf. The heart notes are marigold, beeswax, anise, jatmansi, jasmine and cumin. And the base notes are hay, frankincense, myrrh, mushroom, oak moss, vanilla and tonka. And I was so excited because like frankincense, mushroom, oak moss, vanilla, tonka, beeswax, lavender, like I, I love these notes. But unfortunately, when I put it on my skin, it gives the opening note of puke, which is so sad. <laughs> um, when I spray it on the strip, I get like a bit of a berryness at the beginning for sure. And then mostly a lot of moss and like foresty floor thing. And the biggest image that comes to mind is just, yeah, giant sloth claws just digging in the forest floor. And as they dig, it's all little chunks of like little pieces of wood and very rich brown dirt and little earthworms and 
all the little insects and things that live in there and the pieces of moss and the pieces of trees and the the little crunched up leaves and you smell all those like very very earthy parts of the forest but it's mostly moss to me is the main note that i get and yeah like i said everyone's note is different nose is different one of my favorite um reviewers talks about this being like their absolute favorite fragrance they get so many compliments on it like etc etc and to me i mostly just get moss and then on my skin it gets the puke, so it's so sad. <laughs> um, maybe I need to just give it some more tries. What were the notes that I got? I guess when it dries down it gets incensey apparently. But yeah, for the most part, less dirt than I thought. Eventually it sweetens and lightens, but still it's mostly moss on me. If there was a fantasy character that this reminds me of, it would definitely be like kind of a garden gnomey trolley thing. But that's just me, like literally for some people, it, it, like I, I was expecting much more of a lavender, much more of like a peaceful, because when you think of sloths, you think of like the sleeping and the peaceful and whatever. And yeah, I smell moss, but, but I think I'm in the minority on this one, so check out other reviews. Yeah, this was the only one that I was like, huh, bummer. The others like worked really well on my skin, or like if they didn't work really well on my skin, they just were kind of like on my skin like hummingbird and nightingale like I didn't feel like they lasted super long all the other ones maybe not chipmunk super much but like most of them lasted a ridiculous long time so for sloth I did a very fun green eyeshadow makeup with more like brownie orangey lipstick very different than my usual makeup look but it's always fun to try out different things you know I have a foam mushroom from the dollar store in my hair and these thrifted snake earrings I have this little cat pin that says tired AF. I think he's super cute and the green just felt kind of slothy to me as well as the message. Same with the moon, you know, sleep and sloths and that kind of thing. I have this necklace that is from my brother, this one that is from my mom, and this one that is from Cage. Um, a bunch of different bracelets and rings as usual because can't help myself with layering all sorts of different pieces of thrifted random jewelry. Um, I have a button-down plaid, and over top of that, this sort of vest that my grandmother knitted me. I love the color and the texture. It feels so soft, but also looks really mossy in my opinion, and I just think it looks very professory, cozy, and old man grandpa sort of style. Pants used to be my mom's. I think they're super, super cool. This is what it looks like with the vest untucked. It's very big, so... Um, makes me kind of feel like I'm wearing a dress, but it's fun. Um, and then I have my trusty, rusty docks. I think it works out very cozy and more masculine. I know I get asked for more masculine looks a lot. This is um, one of them, perhaps. At least the outfit, maybe not the makeup, but you know, everything is relative. Gender is not a binary and yeah, this is, this is it. I have saved the other best for last. The first best was first because I could not stop thinking about it and I just needed to get it off my chest. My love for moth and my desire for I'm going to go buy a bottle of it once I save up enough because oh my lord it's so special. Um, but the next one is B. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous artwork with the most regal queen. Whoever does the art for these, very very talented work. This is an incredible fragrance. It won the Art and All Affection Award, or they were a finalist in 2020. I can see why. I know that a lot of people on uh, Fragrance Review YouTube have just like sung this fragrance's praises and I can completely tell why. And normally I'm one of those people that's like, everyone else likes it, well I can't like it then. So there was like a little part of me that was like reluctant because I was like, well everyone else likes it. But I am so thankful I tried this and I can tell why everyone likes it. It's not overhyped in my opinion. It is so special and it absolutely deserves the praise that it gets. The nose behind B is Cristiano Canali. Top notes are orange, ginger syrup, and royal jelly accord. The heart notes are broom, heliotrope, mimosa, and orange flower. And the base notes are benzoin, labdanum, musks, sandalwood, tonka, and vanilla. This is addicting. This is magic. This is Aphrodite's love potion. This is nectar. This is ichor. This is Every, like, mythical word that people would describe what the gods ate and drank, golden amber liquid, that is this. I'm, like, obviously really into fantasy stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever read a fantasy author describe mead, like, this honeyed wine. The way that they describe it is, like, sweet and delicious and, like, having that bite and that- and then you actually try meat and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> because uh, at least me, I don't personally like the taste of alcohol, so it was a big letdown. The way that you think mead would taste as a kid with a really rich imagination, that's how this smells to me. It is dripping and drizzling, but not in like a disgusting, sickly sweet way. It is 
just scrumptious and you know when honey is creamy and has like a little bit of tartness to it it has that i don't know if it's the ginger syrup or what the royal jelly oh my god because my parents are beekeepers and uh, there's been so many times that i've been at their house when they're in the middle of making candles or extracting the wax or you know going through honeycombs or doing whatever they're doing and just the smells in the kitchen, the smells when you go near the hives in the summer and you smell all the flowers around you and you smell the honey in the middle of being made fresh honey in the middle of the countryside, like it conjures that but in an even more incredible fantasy way without ever being too sweet or syrupy. Like if you don't like sweet fragrances, I don't think you would like this. I adore honey, but I think that even people that are like not too fond of honey are like wow when they smell this. When I showed my friend Iko these the other day, B was her favorite. They, uh, upon smelling it, were like, I'm gonna get a bottle. Like, I have to get one now. And I was like, I know. It is so beautifully honeyed and gorgeous. When you do get to the incense, it's mysterious and regal and incredible. What did I write? Literally butterflies. Yeah, it, it did literally give me butterflies. I remember smiling when I smelled this. Pollen and smiles and flowers. I don't like flowers but it makes me melt powdery intoxicating it has the syrupiness of honey it has the fuzziness and the coziness of that bee the only reason that i think i won't get a full bottle of moth right away is because i want to get a small bottle of bee and a small bottle of moth and also probably muscular and also probably squid because oh my lord these are incredible i lose my mind uh this is intoxicating when I spray it on myself, I cannot stop sniffing it. It is absolutely incredible. Highly, highly recommend out of all of them, especially if you're like scared of like, oh, you know, smells like caves and wetness and ponds and stuff. Like, I don't know if I want to smell like that. This is, this is, highly recommend this. I, I have no words. It leaves me speechless. It gives me butterflies and I love it and I would highly recommend it. And this is the outfits that I have chosen for it. So let's go into that. And for my first bee look, I have my hair in a fun yellow scrunchie. Um, I'm wearing yellow makeup and some little stars under my eyes and some red lipstick. For my earrings, I have these giant hearts that almost look like they're radiating from the thrift store and these fake opalite earrings that are also from the thrift store. My dress is thrifted. It's like this adorable yellow plaid. It just feels very flouncy and fun and like a picnic happening on me, which I just adore and feels very appropriate for this uh, fragrance. I'm also wearing like this uh, leathery corset over top of it and I've attached this little poof ball that I found at the thrift store to my belt because I just think it's super cute and bees feel fuzzy and so does this fragrance. I also have a petticoat underneath to give it a little extra oomph um, in the skirt and just makes it extra fun to flounce around in. For my tights, I'm wearing these ripped layered fishnets and ripped layered regular tights. These boots I found um, on Facebook Marketplace, then my other uh, bee outfit that I did, because I just couldn't pick one, um, involves some steampunk goggles that I found at London Drugs, because I'm obsessed. I think they're super cool and I never wear them enough. Bees always feel like very little adventurers to me, so I thought that it would be appropriate to include them. Makeup as usual with the stars and the yellow, but my earrings are these little moons that I found at the thrift store, but again with the opalite. This necklace is from my grandmother and I adore it, and this jacket was from my best friend named Ren. I think it's super cool. It's like silky and yellow and just with the fuzzy um, trim feels very bee-like. Plus I added this little bee bottle cap pin that I made myself by just poking a hole in a bottle pick cap with a nail and a hammer and then sticking a safety pin through it. Um, underneath this is what the outfit looks like. Got my little mismatched spider web glove and my fishnet glove. Green thrifted tank top. This belt from Hot Topic. My jeans with embroidered patches on the back. And my favorite shoes, trusty to rusty docks that I wear all the time. And then a variation on this outfit is just adding some more bee-themed jewelry and this shirt that belongs to my boyfriend. It's from Sin Eater and I love it a lot. This is like one of his favorite colors, the mustardy yellow and one of his favorite shirts, so represent. I stole it from him, but hey, I think it's super cute. And underneath I have layered it with my yellow flannel. I love wearing flannels under sweaters. I think it just gives like such a cozy, fun look, but still wearing just the same jeans and the same shoes. So not gonna bother showing that. Anyway, that's um, this look, another variation on the bee outfit. I am so honored that, um, yeah, to have just like 
been sent these and offered to be able to review them because I just think they're so incredibly special and I never really got the hype behind fragrances in the past. I like couldn't imagine anyone spending more than $20 on a fragrance. I just like did not get the point. And now I'm like, okay, I can completely understand and I, I really have found an appreciation for smell and fragrances that I never knew that I would have. And it, it was funny, the other day my boyfriend was like watching me watch like probably the 50th perfume review on YouTube in a row. He's like, did you ever think that you'd be like the kind of person that just like sits and watches people talk about smells on the internet? I'm like, no, I don't. Um, but but it's, it's, it's so wonderful. I, I only wish that I could like share the smells, like if I could just push them through the screen and like smell a vision them all to you because they are so magical and fantastical and make me feel so many feelings. The brand is like an independent kind of niche fragrance house, which I think is just like super cool. Total magic in bottles. And I am just super honored to have been able to share them with you today. So um, enough of me taking up your time. My lord, this video has probably been like five hours long. I thank you again for sharing this with me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whenever you are watching this. Um, have a good one. And I'm sending you the biggest hug ever. And I hope you have a good one. Bye for now. Bye.